Hey, what up boys? So, do you remember that comment that I made at the end of the last video? And I apologize for the slowdown in uploads, but I should be returning back to the regular schedule within the coming days. Yeah, that one. Don't worry about that, because it's been seven days since my last upload. But I'm back, and there's a concern floating around the Ashes of Creation community right now. And by Ashes of Creation community, I mean the demons inside my head, because they're worried about the current state of Ashes of Creation's latest showcases. But before we get into that, our beautiful patrons and coped out the wazoo Twitch subs and I would love for you to grab yourself a Koopa Cola because although what we've seen over the last few months have been really great progress, the game itself seems to be in a pretty interesting state. Only humans and Vex have been present for over a year now. The Phoenix Initiatives finally getting into the game ended up showing us some questionable model quality, but the most important observation is that only one type of node has ever been present, and this certainly raises some interesting questions when we're only about six months away from the Alpha 2 release. Is the Alpha 2 much smaller in scope than what we originally anticipated? Well, today, I want to just express some concerns about the game because even though we are only six months away, we actually have no idea what the launch of Alpha 2 is going to look like in terms of scope. And for an open development project that charged $250 for its access, something about that just doesn't fit right with me, but I'm sure it's fine. It's gonna be fine, guys. It's gonna be fine. <laughs> Now, with all that bollocks out of the way, let's begin, shall we? So, in the last video, you guys gave some really encouraging comments about the way that I spoke openly and expressed myself. So, I think this video, I will try to continue that trend without going too far off the deep end, because this topic has been eating away at my being for a very, very long time. Long enough to start affecting me negatively, I think. <laughs> Don't worry about the fact that I haven't streamed for two weeks. Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell no. Because marketing for an alpha is always going to be a strange topic to discuss, and what we're basically discussing here is potential future marketing in a sense. Why would an alpha game spend money and resources marketing a testing phase that has no active way to purchase into it and is right now smack bang in the middle of some pretty hardcore development and polished phases as explained by Steven in the last live stream. Our team specifically tech art, environment, uh, our engineering teams, they are overhauling performance related work over the course of this last month as well as next month and the month thereafter in preparation for Alpha 2, you guys should see some significant gains in the demonstrations that we continue to provide leading up to Alpha 2 with regards to that work. And in addition, Chris, Gabe, John on the environment side are undergoing some significant lighting changes, which are going to impact and influence the visuals of the game in a very significant way. A lot of people way. had feelings about lighting today. <laughs> yes, I just, I just want you guys to know that when we talk about how things are still a work in progress, this particular particular endeavor is likely going to have the most impact on the visuals of the game as they continue to work on lighting. That's going to be a, a switch that we flip when it's ready for, for how the world looks and, and their work that they're doing. So just want to keep you guys abreast of that. Uh, it is exciting times when it comes to that work. The TLDR of Ashes of Creation's current development is basically still too far away to be excited, but still close enough for people to stay tuned in. Do Intrepid have a huge marketing push plan for when Alpha 2 is right around the corner? Are they further polishing the game from now until then in preparation for that marketing push? And have Intrepid already answered all of these questions that I've asked? Well, it turns out that I scripted this video last month, and since then, Margaret did answer these very questions. And I think, Margaret, there's something you guys, you wanted to talk a little bit about, kind of on what to expect with regards to, you know, the feature set that we're going to be launching Alpha 2 with, because we've been getting yeah. a lot of questions about that. Um, but basically, we have we have a plan, so just stick with us. We'll, we'll share information with you guys as we go forward. But right now, we're not uh, we're not going to be. We don't want to get people all hyped for what's in Alpha 2 when we're not quite there, right? So we have a case 
cadence in which we will be providing information, but stay tuned. We'll have a guide for Alpha 2 with information on what you can expect, what features you can, you're going to be able to see what systems, what archetypes are going to be available, etc. at the start of Alpha 2. However, that still doesn't answer the concerns the demons in my head have been whispering to me. And it's about time I got these off my chest because personally, I think Intrepid have become increasingly distant with us in terms of communication and teases. Staying in touch with the community has always been one of Intrepid's biggest strengths and one of the reasons why we continue to support this project. Steven popping into the Discord and dropping exciting teases, answering the odd question and even leaking some screenshots occasionally of their progress and that genuinely felt special throughout the last few years as we patiently waited for Alpha 2. To me, it feels a little bit like the team have devolved into a more safe, corporate approach to communicating with us, sending mixed messages that contradict themselves due to miscommunication, and I'm really not sure why. The game is in a very sensitive stage right now with the pack sales ended and still a way to go until anything huge is announced, and that comes across quite poorly to the casual audience when this indie Kickstarter MMO slows down communication when no longer getting any income for their game that doesn't exist, you know? Hopefully these words don't come across in the wrong way, but the last four or five live streams have created more questions than answers, leaving us quite concerned with the state of the game. Because there's this huge emphasis of no spoilers around Ashes of Creation, it's left the community completely and utterly lost as to what Alpha 2's launch is going to contain. And although the team have assured us that they have this big marketing plan coming up, why can't they just talk openly about it now. Is it because Intrepid themselves don't know? Then tell us that. That's all we're asking for. Uh, communication. We've been left in the dark about Alpha 2's launch now for over three years straight, and not once has the team ever given us a straight answer. Even when directly asked, it is still met with deflection widely open to misinterpretation. Which zones can we expect to see in Alpha 2, and how many of them are in a comparable state to the Riverlands and how far along in development they are? We have a lot of zones that are planned for Alpha 2. Not all of them will be online by the time Alpha 2 launches, but they will be uh, continuously integrated and launched as part of Alpha 2 continuing forward. You know, the big areas obviously are the Riverlands, the Badlands, the Sandsqual Desert, the Tropics, the forest areas, some of the tabletop mountains and the um, tundra and ice areas. This answer from Steven, although it's a great answer, it doesn't answer the question that was given. And when pressed about this later on, it is again met with deflection and we still have no clear answer to this extremely important question. This lack of knowledge is genuinely hurting the game's interest. People are dropping out left, right and centre simply because there's nothing to be hyped about anymore and I hope my explanation of this has helped Intrepid see that. For the guys out there going on about, oh don't give us spoilers guys, please. We're all participating in an alpha phase for an MMORPG. What do you mean no spoilers? The whole fucking project is a giant spoiler. It's nonsense. And I think it's mainly because a lot of people don't seem to grasp how long Alpha 2 is going to be. So let's say, for example, Alpha 2 is the Riverlands, the Badlands, the Sandsqual Desert, forest areas and tropics, as stated by Steven in 2022. It would have taken the team about three years to finish 70% of roughly four or five biomes. Ashes of Creation's world has 18 planned biomes, plus a huge ocean, plus a huge amount of mechanics that are confirmed to not even be online for the launch of Alpha 2. So does that mean relative to the current development speed, Alpha 2 will persist for six years minimum? It's an interesting thought because it does kind of make the game feel like a fantasy version of Star Citizen. Are you okay with that? After all, the motto of Ashes of Creation seems to be they're doing things right no matter how long it takes. But let's pull the discussion back a little now and actually talk about the launch of Alpha 2. 
the team have showed us a lot of assets over the last four years. They've shown us 3D models of nearly all the races in the game, including the basic Kalar that were featured in the character creator, the Vec that we've seen a lot also featured in the character creator. We've seen the Empyrean in-game, the Pyre in-game, and we've also seen 3D models of the Valoon humans and their Jin forms, as well as the two Dwarven races, Dunir and Nikua. The only race we haven't seen a proper 3D model of is the Renkai. However, they did show us an early version, which was later reworked with a much more Asian aesthetic. As for the Tolnar, well, we've seen concept, but we know for a fact the Tolnar are not planning to be live for the launch of Alpha 2 anyway, which leads us nicely on to my point here. What races are planning to be live for the launch of Alpha 2. The reason for such a high focus on this particular question stems from us only seeing two Kalar nodes. For those of you who don't follow religiously, Ashes of Creation's nodes are supposed to adopt the aesthetics of the race which contribute the most experience to them. That means nodes in this game will not all look how we've seen them so far. Every single race in the game has their own node aesthetics, and over the years we've seen a few examples of this in both concept art and trailers. More importantly though, these mechanics were present in Alpha 1, as they had early iterations of the Kalar, Dunir, and Empyrean nodes that could all be built up to stage 3. I think nodes in general are one of my biggest concerns for the game, and considering we're this close to Alpha 2's release, we're still missing major information like this. So uh, I wonder what the plan is. Steven claims nodes will progress all the way up to level 5, the city stage for Alpha 2's launch, but that statement doesn't line up with what they've shown. Ultimately, the moral of today's video is why do we know so little about the Alpha 2's launch? Are Intrepid that confident with the game that they're fine with audience just forgetting about it, expecting them to come flocking back when the Alpha 2 launches and it's in an incredible state? Now don't get me wrong, Intrepid are obviously the most openly developed project out there right now and it's not even close, but when it comes to the actual scope of what we expect, we're a little bit left in the dark. Something great that PAX Day have been doing in between their tests has been showing off screenshots of their game and the zones that they've been working on and fleshing out. It's been genuinely exciting to see that, and I don't think it would be much of a spoiler to show some small teaser screenshots of work that you've made on your desert or badlands biomes since you showed us them in 2022. What's important to recognise here is the perception of it. There's a lot of these fake cash grab projects floating around the unreal engine space over the last few years, and trailers like their Desert Biome one are extremely easy to fake and have been faked by other projects. Where's that demon that you showed us? The Scorpion? Do they even exist anymore? Was the trailer just fake? These are all questions that are raised when you show us so much of one single area and no proof that anything else in the game even exists. Are you not proud of them other biomes? It's very confusing to us, but we're a community trying to help support this game by spreading word and creating discussion, but when the discussion is mostly unanswerable questions, it becomes difficult even for me to stay interested. But as usual, I am just one nerd desperate for a good MMO, and I sadly hope my concerns have not spoiled any shred of remaining hype you may have had left. However, I do personally think for an open development project, it's kind of concerning how little we actually know about it, and I hope my words have at least given Intrepid some insight to the general audience's perception of the game. If you were doomed out a little bit by this video, why not come join us over at twitch.tv forward slash Nargiverse as we sit around talking about a game that quite literally doesn't exist anyway because we're high on copium.